Welcome back to the Eastern Panhandle Education Connection for December. I'm Brittany Newman, our current past president and your 2023 Forms Vice Chair. And I'm Andrew Foltz, your 2023 Chair for Forms. Please consult with your broker with any questions about these forms and how they pertain to your company. The first form we're going over today is the Voluntary Land Property Disclosure Statement. Andrew, mm -hmm. you do a lot of land deals. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about this Voluntary Land Property Disclosure Statement. When do you use it? How do you go about filling it out? Sure, so the uh, Land Property Disclosure is actually a form for sellers, okay? Keyword, voluntary. You could put this document in front of them and they can cross it right off and don't fill it out. That's perfectly fine. However, uh, if they do want to talk about the property, I see that pretty, thank yeah. you very much. It goes over a lot of different questions when it comes to land. Sewage system, water system, exterior drainage, the property address. One thing I want to point out, legal description. The legal description is how the county references this property. It's very important to know. Uh, but it goes over all different kinds of questions, um, deeds, any kind of permits that the property has. It's basically just outlining what the seller knows about their property. If they cross it off, you know, it doesn't really help the buyer make a decision uh, easier. But any kind of, um, you know, latent defects that the property knows about, sinkholes, stuff like that, they can put it all in here and push it off to the buyer and the buyer can make a more educated decision. And I just want to touch base um, just on this form. You mentioned legal description and how important that is. I don't think that we can say that enough, not just with these forms specifically, but also in our agreement of sale as well, not to change subjects of form, but the legal description is so important, especially on a land deal, um, because a lot of times there is no actual property address. Mm -hmm. So you are not doing it yourself, the buyer or the seller, any favors if that at least that piece is left blank. Yeah, the important. attorneys need to have that legal description. Most of the time, the property address, they'll, they'll label it as a lot number or something like that, but the legal description is key. That is what you absolutely need to have. Brittany, let's go over the voluntary residential property disclosure statement. Happily. Here's this. Thanks. Tell me a little bit about the form and when you would use it. Uh, well, very similar to the land form. Keyword is it's voluntary. so. We do our best to try to give as much information as we can about the property, but ultimately at the end of the day, it's really what the seller wants to give. I mean, it's their information. They may not know anything about the property. They may have never occupied it. Um, so it really is what they know and what they're ready to disclose mm -hmm. on it. So with this form, um, you know, when we're going through, when we're handing it to them, we want to make sure that they're the ones filling out this information, whether it is in person or online. Um, it needs to be tagged appropriately if you're doing it online so that they're filling it out and you're not filling it out for them, just to best protect all of us. Uh, and then, so with this form, we did have some recent changes as well that are coming in January. So these are really important. Uh, thanks to actually you, Andrew, we did add in the internet access piece there. Unfortunately, we live in an area where not every home has high-speed internet, mm -hmm. <laughs> so we want to be able to disclose to a buyer what internet access is currently available in the home, so it gives them a yes or no option with the provider. And then we also did a lot of cleanup on this form. Um, on a couple different sections here, we mirrored the way the questions were on number 11, and so like number 4, 6, 10, 13 and 16 had multiple questions under really the same category and then it had multiple comment section. What we did is we condensed that to just have all the questions together with yes, no, unknown, NA boxes and then just have one comment section. So it's really gonna make this form easier to read and clean up some of that, um, condensed it down. And then on the end here, obviously a really hot topic is this disclaimer on page five. So on the back of this form, um, at the beginning, when you're filling out just the property address, if they're not filling out any of the rest of the information here, we do need to still have them sign the end, uh, which basically says that they elect to sell the property without any representation. So even if they're not filling 
filling out the rest of this document on the disclosures on the back, they do need to sign off saying that they do not elect to have any warranties for the property and the condition of it. But at the same time, if they know of any latent defects to the property, they do need to disclose that. So they would put that here in the blank and then they're going to sign off as a seller and then the purchaser would sign off whenever they're done. And that sort of uh, summarizes our residential property disclosure form. Thank you so much for tuning in in December's Education Connection, and we look forward to seeing you next month in 2023. See ya.